Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Good morning, Crossroads. How are you doing? You guys are looking beautiful this morning. My name is Marcus. I'm a lead pastor here, and we are in the middle of a series entitled Live Wise, and we're talking about, or we're looking at the book of Proverbs. So if you don't mind, uh, scan that QR code in the back of your seat. That's where you can find all the notes. And um, we're going to be in Proverbs, the 27th chapter this morning. Everybody doing well? A couple of announcements. One, I haven't been in the pulpit in a while, um, but I appreciate Pastor Joel coming and bringing the word. I don't know about you, but I've been encouraged. I've been blessed. I've been, you know, guided by his teachings, and it's been a blessing to me. So, Joel, I don't know where you're at. You are late or tardy or something. (laughs) Or maybe he's on his way. I'm not sure, but... uh, uh, whenever you uh, see him, and I, I'm sure you guys always do, but make sure that you give him kudos or whatever. Say, hey, thanks for, for doing that. And he said, quit being so political also, Jared, you know, Joel. You know, they, they said something about politics. Don't approve of political jokes. Why? Because too many of them get elected. Anyways, um, uh, yeah, so one, Joel, he's done a fantastic job. So we're in here. I've been doing some back things. I've got another injection going on tomorrow. And so he's been helping me out, you know, through this whole process by being in the pulpit. But he's our teaching pastor. That's what he does. That's what he's hired to do. We got some of the best in the country. Seriously, we got some of the best in the country as far as teaching, our worship pastor. And you're going to get to know uh, another name here in this next few months and or years to come, a guy by the name of Tom and Jane uh, Crick. I don't know if they're here this morning. Oh, there you are. Stand up real quick. Look at this guy. He looks very, very dangerous, doesn't he? Tom is the newest uh, hire on our pastoral staff here at Crossroads Church. Um, he's going to be overseeing all of our grow groups and bringing support um, you know, to all of our grow groups because how many of you guys know that we're growing? And the way you can grow large and small at the same time is through discipleship processes uh, that that take place in our small groups. So he came down. He's got a lot of experience. He came from this little church in in California called Saddleback Church, which has about 40,000 people in attendance over there. And he was overseeing all the small group ministry. I think when he got there, there was like 1,500 groups that he oversaw. And then afterwards, there was like over 4,000 groups. And I don't know if I have the numbers right, but he told me that his groups... Uh, the people that attended his groups, there was over 40, there was more people in his groups than they are in our city. And he developed the structure and the support for all that. So out of all places, he resigns, he retires, and he moves out of all places to Seguin, Texas. And why? Because his daughter is in New Braunfels and they're having a child, the grandbaby's here. So they are parked here and somebody told him about Crossroads and then somebody told me about him. I was like, who, what, who is this guy? So let me make sure that he's okay. So I investigated. No, he's not, you know, just didn't get out of prison or anything like that. But every reference I called, we had a conversation and we just had, that's like, you know what? We've been praying for you, Joel and I, for two years. We knew that that would probably be the next hire. And man, this just seems like a fit. And so we looked at all his references and they had nothing but great things. But you'll be hearing from Tom and Jane. This is not the formal introduction kind of, but we'll, uh, when Natalie gets back, we'll make sure and, and empower him and, and lay hands on him and let him speak to the people. Is that all right? But make sure and welcome him. He's a blessing to the body and Jane. We, we, it comes with a package, two for one, okay? Jane is just as gifted as well. So uh, the ladies are at the retreat right now. So guys, make sure and encourage you to wash the dishes or do something different so that when they get home, they have a smile, okay? <laughs> well, we are in Proverbs 12th chapter and the 27th chapter this morning. The title of this morning's message is, See the Danger, Make the Change. See the Danger, Make the Change. Can you say that with me? See the Danger, Make the Change. See the Danger. In other words, when you see trouble coming, don't hide your head. Don't just, you know, ignore it. Do something. Do something about it. I know that's a simple uh, idea, but man, how many, how often have we seen a course that we're on, a path that we're on, and we know that we need to make a course correction, but we ignore it and we just continue to do it? Or how many of you guys know somebody that's done that? Yep. Yeah, and you're probably sitting in your same seat, <laughs> right? I know I have. My three-year-old grandson, uh, my, my son-in-law texted me last night. I thought it was a cute text. Um, because my three-year-old grandson, Ollie, and Ollie reminds me so much of myself. 
I mean, seriously, I wish I had a contrast picture when I was that, that age. I was that handsome at one time as well. <laughs> but he's just a blessing. He's three years old. And he had a genuine concern yesterday for his Mario gummies. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what a Mario gummy is, but he had a genuine concern for the safety and welfare of his Mario gummies. That he wanted to make sure that they were in the safest place possible. Uh, currently, my, my daughter had his Mario gummies inside of the pantry where it actually belongs. Uh, but he said that that's not a safe. There was, there was some danger taking place. He had to move the Mario gummies into the safest place. Well, where's the safest place possible, Ollie? In my tummy. It's like, <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, I get it. But he, he did this principle. He saw the potential danger in his gummies, and he said, I got to do something about this. I tell you what, I'm going to put them inside of here where it's safe. And he made a decision. And so often we can learn from a, a child, right? And so there's wisdom that comes in a child. And speaking of wisdom, I, I saw some old wise sayings. And I won't share a bunch of them, but there's one that I really love. And it's, there are two theories to arguing with women. Neither of them work. <laughs> thought that was great. And the other one was, don't walk behind me because I might not lead. Don't walk in front of me because I may not follow. As a matter of fact, don't walk beside me. Just leave me alone. <laughs> I love that one. Uh, I want to begin today with a question, with a couple questions. Question number one is this, and you can look at your notes real quick. Um, how do I choose the right path in life? How do I, the number one, when we did a survey, you guys, that was a, one of the number one things that y'all wanted to know is how do I know God's will? How do I know I'm on the right path? Well, that's a great question because there's often a disconnect between where we want to end up and the path that we are currently on. There's a, there's a big disconnect many times. It's not where we are that's the issue. It's where you're headed to. That's right. It's where you're moving towards. So one, how do I choose the right path? Well, you have to ask the second question. What path are you currently on? What path are you currently on right now? Because your decisions, my decisions, are like steps down a path. There are financial paths that lead to a certain destination, a predetermined destination. There are relational paths that you are currently on that will lead you to a certain predestined destination. Does that make sense? There are relational paths. There are spiritual paths. There are addiction paths. There are paths. And so you have to ask yourself the question, in whatever area, spiritually, whatever it is, what path are you currently on right now? And the third question is really, really good. And it's this. It says, if you continue in the, in the course that you are currently on, where will you end up? Where will you end, end up? Uh, the path of being a workaholic has a destination. The path of impurity has a destination. The path of greed, the path of debt, the path of control, the path of jealousy, the path of mercy, the path of kindness and goodness also have a destination. Spending more than you have that you're bringing in is a path. That you're on. Make sense? Hanging out with the wrong kind of crowd um, is a path that you're currently on. So you have to evaluate if you continue the course that you're currently on, where will you end up? And I, I have to say that, you know, we hear this all the time. God didn't allow this to take place. We often hear it. Why did God allow this to take place? God didn't allow it. You chose it. We chose this path. Like, man, gosh, Marcus, you need to stay away from the pulpit more. You chose the path where you're at right now. <clears throat> People hit 30 and 40, and all of a sudden they find that their dreams are not coming to pass. And why aren't they coming to pass? They're exactly at the place where their feet have led them to. They are exactly in the destination what, based upon the path that they were on. If I go to 10 right here and I go west, that path will not lead me to Houston. I don't care how much I pray, how much I confess, how much scripture I read from the east to the west. Whatever it is I do, fast, do whatever, because that, that will not change the destination of going west on 10. Does that make sense? Yep. There's a predestined, it's already there. And so sometimes we, we hear people come in, it's like, I want to know God more, but I don't read my Bible. Mm. It's like, well, that's why you don't know God. <laughs> 
Or, or I want to have a great sex life once I get married, so I'm going to go ahead and practice with everyone I date. Ouch. What's happening here? I want God to bless me financially, but I don't want to give him anything. On and on. You see, I don't understand that type of thinking. I want to lose weight. Let's supersize it. You get there? Uh, I, I want doesn't make the difference. We have to do something about it. The path we choose to walk down determines our destination. So those are three great questions that you need to evaluate and look at this particular uh, week so that you can answer some of these things and make a course correction. Why? Because you win or lose by the path that you choose. You win or lose. Yeah, that's a bumper sticker, and that's something that you can teach your student. You win or lose by the path that you choose. Why am I in this place? Look at the path that you're on. It doesn't lie. It's, it's predictable. It has a predestination. You win or lose. Psalms 25 says, show me. It's one of my favorite psalms when I was 19. I, I found it because I wanted to know who this God was that I found in this book and the path that he wanted me to go. Psalms 25 says, show me, O Lord, your ways. Teach me into your path. We use this a lot. Proverbs, the fourth chapter, the path of the righteous or the just that's like the shining sun. Our path as a follower of Jesus should shine brighter and brighter and brighter until the perfect day, until his return, right? There's another one that says, ponder the feet, ponder the path that you are currently on. Ponder the, the path of your feet. Let all your ways be established. In Psalms 119, it says, his word is a lamp to our feet and it's a light to what? Our path. And so today, I, I want to look at the principle uh, 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 that we find here in this passage of Scripture. It's the, the idea of looking ahead. Looking ahead. Make sure and see the danger, make the change. See the danger, make the change. Proverbs, the 27th chapter, that's where we're going to be at. It's just one, one sentence, and then we can go home and go eat some barbecue and watch the Cowboys. I'm not going to say anything more about the Cowboys. I love them. Proverbs 27, 12 says, the prudent see danger and they take refuge, but the simple keep going and suffer for it. In this passage, there are two types of people. There are two types of responses and there are two outcomes. It's very simple. It says there are two types of people. There's the prudent and then there's the simple. We'll look at that here in just a second. And there's two responses. Both of them saw danger. The the, the simple saw it and the prudent saw it, but only one did something. Right? It's just like the, the guy that builds his house on the rock or on the sand. Both of them, you know, both of them faced a storm. And both of them hit sand when they were building their house. I used to have a friend that lives right on the beach. And if you dig a little bit, you know, all you'll find is more sand. But if you dig a little bit more and more and more, you'll find rock. And so even though both of them knew how to build a house, the one house that stood, the storm, is the one that was able to go a little bit deeper, use a little bit more effort, a little bit more work to get down to where they found the rock. And they established their footing on a rock. Does that make sense? Because Jesus is our rock. And there's two outcomes. One, because he saw something and did something, he avoids the harm. And the other one, he suffers hurt. That's the message. Let's go ahead and pray. No. What's the difference? The primary difference, it's not what they saw, but what they, how they responded to what they saw. Amen. So it's not what you see. It's really important for us to see things and to look ahead and predict some things that are probably going to go south or going to get better and stronger. But it's not about that. It's about doing something about it. So the prudent, what is the prudent real quick? Here's the prudent. You have to evaluate yourself and just take a look at it. Who am I here? A uh, prudent is an individual is thoughtful and, and t- thoughtful about their actions. They anticipate potential risk and make decisions that protect their well-being and that of others. The prudent understand where they're at right now. And they understand that today's decisions determine tomorrow's experiences. That's good. The decisions that you make today, life is connected. In other words, yeah. a wise person or a prudent person understands that even though this person is enticing me and pulling me, that's not the path I want to go because I know that if I do this, it's going to take me to a certain place. Life is connected. What I do today will uh, affect and impact tomorrow. And so those that are simple don't understand that. 
And they don't realize and they don't live their life as if though it's connected. They just give in to the immediate gratification or the immediate pull that's taking place. Even though they're on a path here, all of a sudden they got ADHD. Or what's that movie? It's like, squirrel. That, what is that? I can't remember what it is. But it, that's what it reminds me of. It's like, you're on the path, squirrel. It's like, oh, shoot. How did I wind up here? <laughs> Adultery never comes on like a seizure. In other words, you don't wake up in the morning. It's like, oh, hey, what are you doing here? You were on a path. On the path long before, and if we were just to look ahead, we could see the danger and make our adjustment. Make sense? So what path are we on? So um, the simple, on the other hand, doesn't foresee the danger or think about the consequences of their choices. They just give in to their carnality, to the flesh, to the voice that's speaking to them uh, 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 in the moment. The problem is, People aren't looking ahead. People aren't applying this particular principle right here. And, and there's, there's an emotional pull on this path as well that'll try to distract you. That, that'll try to make you just temptations along this path. And then there's blind spots. You don't know what you don't know. There's blind spots that you have, all of us have, that only those that are closest to you can help you understand what those blind spots, spots are. Usually your spouse or a really close friend. But these three areas right there, that's the problem. We have to be uh, in the habit of looking ahead because looking ahead gives you a better perspective of the whole picture. I remember Natalie and I, we started skiing several years ago. Well, we started and stopped that same day. But uh, 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 I didn't know anything about skiing, so we got a hold of um, uh, an instructor and paid them to give me some ski lessons. And it, it was, it, I mean, we had a great time. I was sore as crazy, but I remember them teaching me the pie. You guys know about the pie. It's, you got to... You got to put your skis a certain way, and uh, because you can you can kind of control the speed or whatever. So like, I, I have no clue. I'm a very athletic guy, but that was a different monster right there. It was a whole lot different, and there was a lot more weight on me back then as well. So it just the 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 path took me wherever my weight shifted to. Okay, <laughs> and it was very hard. We were where ski pups were at. Uh, the ski pups are the little babies that I was on the same place where they were practicing at. And man, next thing I know, after about 45 minutes, they all scattered, like, let this guy go, because there's no telling where he's going to go. And I had a big old Winnie the Pooh hat on. So can you imagine a 200, 300 pound guy sitting there, and all of a sudden this guy's coming, with this, you know, over, running over a five-year-old kid that just wants to ski and have fun. And so I remember on that, on that particular trip, I'm sitting there, and I wanted to get to the ski lift, and because Natalie was already over there, and I wasn't there. I was falling behind because I'm trying to figure out this pie thing. And I'm, I'm, I'm going up a hill and I'm about to go down a hill and I didn't know if I could stop before I hit the, the thing that I'm supposed to be on, that thing that goes up. And so as I'm going there doing the pie thing, I hear somebody behind me, hey, let me have your ski pole. And I'm looking back and this guy just goes right by me, grabs my ski pole and takes off. And I'm like, Hey, he goes, that's okay. He goes, I'll put it right here. I just needed to push. I'm like, so he pushes himself and he goes over to wherever he's going and leaves a ski pole there, maybe 20, 30 feet in front of me. So here I am going to my ski pole, but I'm looking down. And the instructor told me, he goes, whatever you do, don't keep your eyes down. Keep them, look ahead. When you look ahead, you have a better perspective and you can navigate better. But I didn't pay attention to that. I just listened to like, I don't want to fall down. So I'm like this. But I see myself getting closer to that little ski pole because it was sticking up. And as I got closer to it, I started getting happy because it's like, okay, and now I can get this thing. When I reached over, the front of the ski hits the pole <laughs> and knocks it down. And as I kept on going because I couldn't stop, the weight of my foot now is on the edge of the pole and it comes back up. <laughs> and boom, I'm just like sitting there. It's like bleeding out, and I'm laughing. It's like, oh my God, this is hilarious. And of course, there's people everywhere. It's like a spring break or whatever. And I didn't know I was bleeding. I thought I had a little bit of blood, so I just wiped it off and kept on. And then Natalie's over there waiting for me, and she looks at me. She goes, what happened to you? It's like, what do you mean? Because there's frozen blood all over you. <laughs> and I told the story, and it was just a hilarious thing. But I didn't look down. And as the ski instructor, he goes, hey, the faster you go, the further you have to look around. And by the end of the day, that whole weekend, I was able to look a little bit further down the road because I could, that helped me with perspective. And so, so many times, looking ahead is so vital in our lives spiritually. It's very important for us to look 
uh, ahead so we can get some grounding. We can get a true picture of where we're at. Because sometimes all we're doing is just focus on what's right there in front of us. We miss out. We make, that's, in those moments like that, there's, there's constant pull. There's a gravitational pull to trip up. There are uh, gratification, there are fleshly desires that come up. And if we're not careful, we're not keeping our perspective, we're not making decisions based upon our past experience, our present circumstances, and our future hopes and dreams, we just make a decision based upon our immediate need in our flesh. Make sense? Anybody ever done that? Good. One person did. (laughs) Stop doing it. Why do we keep doing it? Because we got to get in the habit of looking ahead. There's not only... um, a habit like, but there's an emotional pull. Always, there's always something on the road, on the wrong path that offers some type of immediate fix or thrill. Zero percent financing, a, a share in the, a, you know, in the stock or something, whatever it is that they're, they're telling you. I know he's ugly, but he's rich. I know she just got out of prison, but she's beautiful. So whatever it is, there's always a pull, an immediate, grat- immediate fix or thrill. And there's an emotional pull. And listen, you can't overcome, you can overcome your emotions, but if you're not in the habit of doing it, your emotions will take you everywhere. And you'll make decisions based upon the emotional responses that you have in life. Does that make sense? And so also we have all blind spots. And the blind spots, you got to evaluate where you're at. And if you don't know where you're at, ask a good friend. Ask your wife. She will tell you. I promise you. (laughs) And now it's a matter of not getting upset. And buying into what she's saying and then making the adjustments, making the changes. And here's what I've noticed in life. That before anyone gets shamed publicly, the Holy Spirit is working on him privately. To prevent any public embarrassment to take place. That's not what God wants to do. And God doesn't do it anyways. We do it to ourselves. But you'll notice that when all of a sudden you see someone in the paper or something like that, that didn't just take place. They were on a path. And I promise you that the Spirit of God was working in in, in life privately before that public embarrassment took place. And so that's why this particular thing is important. We have to look ahead and make our adjustments as we go. And it never stops. It's not like you're going to arrive. It never stops. They're only... Because people, we need to respond. God always responds, not based upon where you're at, but based upon where you're going. That's how he looks at life. A relationship that you're in, never evaluate the relationship based upon where it is, but where it's moving towards. Evaluate in those moments. We all have blind spots. And in some cases, if we're not careful, if we neglect those blind spots, all of a sudden, there is a point of no return. There is a point where once you want to make the adjustment, it's kind of too late almost. You know, if you're 60 or 70, that's not the time to start thinking about saving. The time to start evaluating your relationship is not after you get pregnant. There comes a time when the decisions that we make, man, could impact the next several years in our life. And what can help us prevent some of those, those regrets in life is by looking ahead, by evaluating some of these things and taking a look at that. There are two people that respond to where you're going, God and your mama. Right? I can hear mom's words still. Even though she's not with us, I can hear her words still. Mijo? Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay, mom. I got you. So, what do we do this week? It's like, is that it? No, hold on. What do we do this week? Here's what I would encourage you to do. Reflect this week and ask yourself these questions. You can take a picture of that. Just ponder. Just think about these. And get in the habit of give them to your kids. Shoot this and give that to your, your, your teenager. Or dear college student, what direction do you want to go financially? What direction do you want to go in this relationship that you're in? What relation, what do you, which way do you want to go in the business that you're currently in? In this season of your life, as you retired, what do you want to do there? What dreams and hopes do you have? And then evaluate, are the paths that I'm on today, are, are they going to get me there? And if they're not, what course corrections do I need to make? What are necessary? Why? Because today's decisions always contribute to tomorrow's experiences. It's very, very important for us to do. We've got to make decisions. If you see danger, make the change. Do something about it. 
If you're in a marriage and your partner's been saying, man, I think we need to go get some help. Guess what? You probably need to go get some help. Do something about it. Don't ignore it. If you're married and you're starting to enjoy the company of someone in the opposite sex in your own office, then you've got to do something about it. If you're single and that guy or that gal is making moves on you and you're starting to kind of like it, do something about it. That's your, your time to look ahead like, this could potentially go this way. Uh, I put a prayer there in your notes, and I want to encourage you to put it on your refrigerator or your bathroom or tattoo it on your arm, whatever you want to do. But it's a simple prayer, but I think God answers and he is quickened um, by his spirit in our lives through a prayer like this. Lord, help us to see trouble come. Actually, let's read this ourselves. Lord, help us to see trouble coming long before it arrives and give us the wisdom to know what to do and the courage to do it. Just keep praying that over and over again. And there's so many biblical illustrations that apply this principle. The one thing that I'm reminded of is Noah. You remember Noah? Noah had a little small family, seven or eight sons, Jem, Hem, Jem, I forgot their names. Yes. And um, they decided one day that they were going to build a boat, both of them. I mean, all, 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 the whole family is going to build a boat by instruction of the Lord. And that would have been okay, except the boat was a field, a, a football field and a half long and wide and high. It's crazy. It, has, it was actually 75 feet wide, 450 feet long, 45 feet high. And so they decided to take on this task only with a handful of them. And as they went on this journey for the next hundred, couple hundred years, they looked like the most foolish family on the face of the earth. Hitting something, nailing something, putting boards here, putting boards there. They looked foolish. They were embarrassed. Their reputation failed. And on and on and on. But they just kept moving ahead. They saw the path that they were on. They saw the danger that was ahead. And they just kept plowing ahead on the path that God had given them. And then all of a sudden, one day, they hear God's voice saying, hey, get in. And they get in. And guess what? Nothing happens. Like, what the snappers? But seven days later, all of a sudden, something took place. All of a sudden, when the people saw this man now, what looked like the most foolish man and the most foolish family in the whole world all of a sudden became the most wisest man in the whole world. Why? Because he saw the course. He saw the danger ahead and he made an adjustment. Didn't matter if that adjustment that he made was just wearing on him. He just kept staying ahead, plowing ahead, moving forward, bringing his family in. All Noah wanted to do with his family was what Ollie wanted to do with his gummy bears. He wanted his family to be in the safest place possible in the ark, just like Ollie. The safest place possible was not in a pantry, but in his tummy. And the safest place possible for Noah's family was in the ark because it's in the ark, which is a type and shadow of Jesus. It's in the ark that you will always rise above waters. It's in the ark that you will always just overcome the things and the storms of life that come our way. That's why our children's ministry looks like an ark, because I want them to learn and understand who they are in the ark, who they are in Christ Jesus. And when we know who we are in Christ's decisions, guess what? Greater, greater, greater decisions we'll make, fewer regrets we'll have in life. Amen? Amen? So make the change. Evaluate. Look ahead. See the danger. Let's make the change in Jesus' name. Amen? Father, you're so good to us. Thank you for the word. Thank you for the instruction. Thank you for wisdom coming across, Lord God, from Proverbs. And we just ask, Lord God, as we evaluate, as we ask some of these questions that, Lord, there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. We just know that this is a sanctifying process of the Spirit of God and that uh, you're leading and guiding us into green pastures, into greater places. So we just surrender these things to you in Jesus' name. And everyone that agreed with that said, amen. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.